they still haven't really figured it out. They still haven't figured out the rock and the hard place that the Fed and the country are between. Because the Fed is going to have to pivot, but inflation is going to run out of control. See, they've got to make a choice. Do they want inflation or do they want economic implosion? Now, ultimately, if they choose inflation, we're going to have an implosion anyway because we're going to have hyperinflation. It just may happen a year later. And, well, that's good enough for the politicians. All they care about is that it doesn't happen now. Because to fight inflation, and there's only one way they're going to fight inflation successfully, which is why they can't do it. They've got to raise interest rates above the rate of inflation. And inflation is what, 8%? Even if it's 6%, they got to get short-term interest rates up to 7%. They're, they're barely at 4%. They got a long way to go. And they've got to have massive cuts to government spending. They're not even considering that. Because right now, the way the government pays for spending is with inflation. Inflation is the stealth tax by which the government pays for everything. In fact, going all the way back to the TARP bailouts, Obamacare, the PPP, how did we get all this government? We didn't get it for free. We paid for it with inflation. They created money to pay for all this stuff. Now, if the government wants to get rid of inflation, they have to get rid of that money. And so they have to run budget surpluses. The Federal Reserve has to be able to withdraw all the liquidity that it's supplied. So we have to have big cuts to government spending. Right now, the government's got to cut Social Security, Medicare, Obamacare, national defense. We have to shrink the amount of money the government is spending. The government has to spend less money next year than it spent last year. In real, real terms, actual cuts, not reductions in the rate of entry, increases, but actual cuts. That's not happening. So the government's got to choose. Do we want to have a financial crisis and cut government spending and allow bankruptcies and defaults and all these losses? Or do we want to have inflation? And that's what they're going to pick. Sure, if they thought they can get rid of inflation without a problem, yes. The public doesn't like inflation, so the politicians wanted to talk tough about inflation. But what they're going to like even less than inflation is when they lose everything they've got, when they have a complete economic implosion, when their savings and investment accounts get wiped out and they lose their jobs. They're not going to like that. Now, of course, that's going to happen eventually anyway. There's no free lunch here. If the government chooses inflation, then inflation is going to wipe everybody out. So everybody's going to get wiped out through de deflation when this whole thing collapses and a crisis, or they're going to get wiped out through inflation. But the reason the Fed is going to pick inflation is because that happens later. And of course, as we've seen, they can come up with a scapegoat to blame inflation on somebody else. They never accept responsibility for the inflation they create. So if the Fed keeps hiking rates and everything implodes, well, hey, we did that to ourselves. They can bl blame the Fed. They bl blame the Fed. But if prices just run out of control, well, we could blame OPEC. After all, they just cut production for oil. We could blame Putin. Uh, we can blame greedy corporations. We can blame capitalism, speculators. I mean, maybe they'll even try to blame me. Who knows? But they're never going to accept any responsibility for what they did. But what I started talking about when we saw this Lehman type moment, and remember, you know, I'm familiar with these Lehman moments because I remember when I was short the subprime market and the things that finally happened to get me to realize that, okay, I'm, we're about to get paid because I knew what to look out for, because I was looking for these signs. The idea that nobody rings a bell, it's not true. They rang the bell. They, B G Big Ben went off. <laughs> not, pe people didn't hear it. People still don't understand the disaster that the Federal Reserve has created with this policy. You know, I was very much against QE from the beginning, and people are about to find out why. The Paul Krugmans of the world and all the people on mainstream investment firms who were blindsided by the 2008 financial crisis, who laughed at me on national television when I was warning about that crisis, these are the same people who are oblivious again because they think the Fed solved the problem they didn't understand. I understood the problem. That's why I knew the crisis was coming. And I also knew that the Fed made the problem they created worse. I just didn't know how long it would take before we experience the consequences. Well, now we're here, right? We've, we've met the can that we kicked down the road and there's no place left to kick it. But people have no idea how bad this is going to be because we've had over a decade of unprecedented monetary madness and an unprecedented level 
of malinvestments, misallocation of resources. All these mistakes have been made that have to be corrected. And the fact that we didn't correct them a decade ago means they got much bigger, but it doesn't mean that we could you know, avoid the day of reckoning forever. Uh, we've got a date with destiny and you know, it's, it's soon. And what I started to observe was the divergence in the markets, looking at what happened in the precious metals market, looking at the big outperformance in silver. And today we had almost 9% move up in silver in one day. I mentioned the outperformance last week, last month in silver over gold. To me, looking like, okay, this is indicative of a turning point that you now see silver, which had been leading gold down, now leading gold up. And in a bull market in precious metals, silver outperforms gold. And the fact that it's outperforming now is a sign that we may be in a bull market. In fact, silver is now up 18% since its low last month. So that's almost a bull market. What is in a bull market by that 20% definition is gold and silver mining stocks. The GDXJ made a two and a half year low a week ago today. A week later, it's 20% higher. In one week, uh, we moved up 20% from that low. And I saw this action, I've been commenting on it the last couple of podcasts, also the topping action in the US dollar. We had that one spectacular day where we had outside reversal days in the dollar, in the gold market, in the gold and silver mining stocks, and in the bonds. And I thought the outside day in the bonds was pivotal in that it would put in a short-term top. And so far, it looks like it has. I just don't think it's going to be a long-term top. I think that's just you know, created a bear market rally in bonds. But for the dollar, I think it probably is a top. And now we're in a new bear market in the dollar and a new bull market in gold and silver and gold and silver mining stocks. So I think this is the turning point. Has the Fed officially capitulated yet? No. Have they pivoted? No. But I think the markets are starting to sense that this is imminent. And I think a lot of people said, hey, I, I don't want to buy any gold. I don't want to you know, buy these gold mining stocks until after the Fed pivots. And I've always said it'll be too late. I mean, it won't be too late, but it won't be nearly as opportune as buying before the pivot because you got to take a little bit of a risk, right? No guts, no glory. The market is going to start to price in the pivot before the pivot happens. So if you wait for the official pivot, you could miss the big, a huge move off the lows. Gold stocks could double or triple before we finally get the pivot. Now, I don't think it's going to be a buy the rumor, sell the fact where the people who bought when they finally get a pivot, well, then that's the top. No, I think that's just going to send the market into, a, into another leg up because people have no idea what this pivot means because inflation is going to get worse and worse and worse during this recession. And you have a lot of people who think that recession cures inflation, that if people lose their jobs, well, that, that, that helps uh, fight inflation. In fact, people are actually saying that the goal of the Fed is to put people out of work to reduce inflation. That is nonsense. People working doesn't cause inflation. Economic prosperity doesn't cause inflation. You don't have to make the country poorer to get rid of inflation. You have to make the government smaller. The government is the source of inflation. Small ebook, big impact, the wealth tree. The only four ways that will make you financially free forever. Download it here for free.